Hi, it's me, Jazzy. I'm back with another tech-related video, and today I've got a nice little kit build for you. One of the kits I picked up a while ago from AliExpress, this is a little Tesla coil. I had a few people ask me over the past couple of months about doing a Tesla coil kit, and I found this one quite cheaply on AliExpress, so let's give it a go. Right, here we go with the Tesla Coil DIY welding kit, self-made arc fun coil audio. Right, that sounds promising. Let's, let's see if we can get this Tesla Coil working, shall we? We had a brief look at this before in the AliExpress Tech Time episode. We've got all sorts of goodies in here. Here's our coil. Lovely. Okay, one Tesla Coil, a couple of heat sinks. There's our board. Looks fairly self-explanatory. Great, we've got a little cable, three and a half mil jack to jack for audio. So we can put some audio into this. We've got some very small instructions. Now we've been lucky with the AliExpress kits and we've had really good instructions. This one, they're all in Chinese by the look of it. Yep, 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 okay. Well, we could translate them. We've got a schematic, so we're all right. We can refer to the schematic if we get in trouble. And we've got a component list, and I'm sure I can find online information if I need to. Right, so let's get the PCB holder, and we can get it set up. Always love starting a new kit. Right, so what's in our bag of goodies then? All right. Got a bit of wire there. Okay, we have got a that looks like our power jack in. Got some resistors, so they'll be going in first. We've got a couple of LEDs, and they've given us a little neon bulb. I presume that's for playing with the Tesla coil. So we've got an electrolytic, we've got a ceramic capacitor, and we've got a couple of transistors here. What have we got? We've got a BD243C bipolar transistor. And we've got an 80 NF70, which is an N-channel power MOSFET. We've got four standoffs and some screws. Let's start with resistors. Right, so there's just four resistors in this kit. Right, so R1 and R4 are 10K. That looks like those. And then R3 and R5 are 2K. Yep, there we go. Okay, let's get the 10Ks in first then. So if you've built a kit with me before, you know that I tend to like to snip these off rather than pull the paper off because you get sticky residue on the end, which can end up on your board. Now, one thing that I usually do, but I don't always remember to show you it, is to give the board a wipe down with some IPA before you start because it just removes any residue that's on here that might affect your solder flow. Sometimes when you start with kits and you think that you're really bad at soldering, it could be just a bad kit, there is that. Sometimes I found some of these little boards solder up great, some of them not so much. That just makes sure there's nothing on the board that's going to cause us any problems. So we're going to get our 10K resistors in first, and that was R1 and R4. Right, should be quite a simple little kit and a bit of fun. We get to play with Tesla coils at the end of this, which when I test this thing, I'm going to be, I'm not going to be testing it here next to sensitive equipment. I will be testing it somewhere out of the way. So R1 is there, that's a 10K, and it is marked as 10K on the board, that's nice. That makes life easier for us. And R4. There's quite a few of these Tesla coil kits around, and my reasoning behind getting this particular one is I saw it and it was cheap. All right, now we've got the 2K resistors. Could be a bit of fun though, what do you reckon? It's Better than a wooden escalator, right? R3 and R5. There's R3. It's marked as 2K on the board. One more to go in, and then we'll solder these in, and that's all our resistors done. I think these are quite nice, simple little kits. 
Got a few more on the way. Right, let's flip that over. We'll get these soldered in. I always look at viewer suggestions for kits in the comments and where possible, I can look at getting them and putting them together on the channel if they're suitable. I missed one. Actually just gonna swap this around so I can get to this one here because it was hiding underneath the clamp there. Nearly missed that. There we go. I have to clamp it the other way around because that was hiding underneath the clamp. That's easy to catch you out, but as long as you spot it before you try and power the thing up, then you're good. I've just printed this off of the AliExpress listing, which might give us a little bit of help if we need it. So we know where each one's gonna go. So we've got our diodes here. We've got a red light and a blue light, and this will give us an indication of where everything goes, if there's anything we're not too sure of. Okay, so let's get our LEDs in, shall we? Now, as always with LEDs, the long leg positive. So the blue one supposedly goes here and it is marked plus and minus on the board, which is rather nice of them. So I'm guessing this is going to light up the inside of the coil for maximum effect, because that's what we want, maximum effect. Right, let's get these two LEDs in. So we are just going to whiz that around so I'm nearer to it. If you don't have great instructions, if you've got a photo of the completed kit that can often answer a lot of questions there we go lovely right now what's what should we do next so let's go electrolytic which is c1 c1 and that is here and again the long leg positive and it is marked on the board on this one fantastic let's get this other capacitor in this is not polarized and this goes, ceramic capacitor, goes in C2, and C2 is here. Wow, they haven't given much in terms of spacing for this poor thing. All right, well, we'll just do it like that, that's fine. It's not gonna be in the way of anything. There's no casing for this. All right, so let's get the capacitors soldered in. The solder seems to flow reasonably well on here. I'm looking and looking for the audio jack, thinking it's not included. No, look, it's actually attached on the bottom of the barrel jack. <laughs> That's two separate components right there. This is the 3.5 mil audio jack, so you can put audio in from your phone or another music source to allegedly get some sort of music out of this thing. That should be interesting. Right, so the audio input is number six. Audio input goes down here then. Great, okay. Right, so to keep that sitting flat, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use one of the clips off the Omnifixo, because then I can just hold that in place, tack that and then remove the clip, and then we're all good. Why have I not thought of this before? Great, then I can remove the clip. Another new use for Omnifixo that we didn't even think about. That looks good. Right, there you go, and there's our audio jack, and that looks like it's in pretty straight. Now we've got the power jack, we've got to do the same with that. Yeah, that works. Great. Spin it over, I can tack these two, and then I can move the clip and do that one. And of course, when you're working, it's always nice having the project a little bit nearer to you. So having it raised up off the bench like this is a good thing. Now I think it's just transistors to go in. We've got our BD243 bipolar transistor and an ATNF70, that's an N-channel power MOSFET. That is Q2, BD243. And Q2 goes here. Now we've also got a heatsink. So what I will do with this, I'm gonna screw it to the heatsink first. Right, heat zinc compound. Not too much. I always get carried away with these, you see. You should see me putting in a CPU, the amount of thermal compound on it. Okay, so that was Q2. That can sit there. We'll solder those in in a sec. Let's deal with Q1. 
on Q1 is an ATNF70, which is this one here. Here we go, just a little dab will do you. Yeah, just going to put the lid back on this before I make a mess. Okay, it's Q1. Lovely, starting to look like something now, isn't it? It's always best to attach components to the heatsink before you solder them in because otherwise you're going to be putting a lot of stress on these legs. If you solder it in first and then try and make the screw hole line up, it might not. Okay, that's good. Now, let's clip these off. Now, with legs like this, just be super careful when you're clipping them off because these are the type of slightly thicker legs that can really ping at your face when you're cutting them. I know it sounds like a daft thing, but it can happen. Safety first, eh? That's looking all right, isn't it? That's looking cool. Looks a bit of a gadget, that now. So this is what's described in the instructions as a secondary coil. It's just a piece of wire that goes from J1 to J2 and loops around the Tesla coil. In my mind, this the piece of wire would be more like the primary coil and the Tesla coil would be the secondary coil because the voltage is stepped up. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'll hold that wire there while I solder that in place. Now we've got to go around J1. And that is supposed to sit around the outside of your Tesla coil there. Right, I'm just going to clamp that. Now, does this have any way of attaching? I must have to glue it down. I've got some glue. I can always glue it up down to the base. But we've got to attach these windings. So I'm just scraping the enamel off the copper wire of the top of the Tesla coil. And I'm now going to do the same with the bottom one, ready for soldering onto that pad. So now to stick the coil down, I'm using nail glue because I have some to hand, which is a lot like super glue. And stick the coil with the arrow facing down, just give some light pressure on it for a few seconds until the glue dries. Okay, looks good. Well, let's just check for strength. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Happy with that, good stuff, that nail glue. Right, I've got one more little wire to solder on. This little tiny one needs to go on this pad and just pull the wire out the top a bit. Right, I think that's ready to roll. Now we need a DC barrel jack and this apparently runs on 12 to 24 volts. Right, so I've brought the little Tesla coil over to a different area away from all my sensitive test equipment because I'm not too sure what this is likely to be putting out. I have put the little standoff feet on to finish it off and we're ready to go. I've got the good old Farnell power supply out. Okay, so we've got the LEDs glowing in there. There's red and a blue. You don't get quite so much off the blue. I'm drawing quite a lot of current though. I mean, this only gives half an amp. Quite a good spark going. Let's see if we can try and... Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, you can sort of tease it out a little bit. Of course, the other party trick, they've given you a little neon bulb in with the kit. So, so yeah, if you get it near it, you can see that light up, like really bright, but don't get that too near because if that, if that spark jumps across, you get a zap. That's pretty cool though. Now the other cool thing with this is apparently it plays music. So we're gonna try that. I'm gonna use the little one me box. A few people have asked me about this. It's just a little box of tricks. I bought it off Amazon. It wasn't a massive amount of money. And you've got a couple of outputs here. You've got RCA and you've got three and a half mil jack here and you've got DC barrel jack to charge it up or you can run it off that DC five volts. And you just Bluetooth stuff to it. Bluetooth it to your phone or whatever or your tablet. And it just it's just a useful music source. I use it as a backup when I'm DJing in case my system goes down. Let's have a look at putting some music through. See if you can hear it. Who's up for a bit of crab rave? All right, switch on. Okay, so coil is running. Oh, 
That's fantastic. And the blue LEDs going in time as well. Just about to see that down there. And you can see heat sinks doing its job there. Wow, we've got 94 degrees on that heat sink there. So there you go, a really cheap Tesla coil kit that was great fun to build and great fun to play with. Well, that was a bit of fun, wasn't it? Build your own mini Tesla coil kit. Well, the kit was great fun to put together and I had fun playing around with it. Now, I'm not sure if I had the little wire a little bit too short on the top there. I'm not an expert on these. It's the first time I've built or used a Tesla coil. So please feel free to let me know your top Tesla tips in the comments down below. And if you liked this, maybe I'll look at building another one. I quite fancy building a slightly bigger one that gives a bit more of a spark. Could be a bit of fun. Anyway, I've got some more kit builds in the pipeline as well. So keep an eye out for those coming up. As always, massive thanks to everyone for watching, sharing, liking and subscribing. And big thanks to all my YouTube and Patreon members. And don't forget you can support me on Patreon and buy me a coffee, which helps to support the channel and keeps me making more videos. I'll be back soon with another tech related video, but in the meantime, take care and I'll see you on the next one.